hello, that's me again. Today is the 17th of October. It is Monday and there are some things which are worth uh, pointing out to. And I'm not talking about the continuous Russian missile and uh, loitering uh, ammunition or munitions assault on the key uh, uh, industrial and political, uh, basically, uh, decision centers now uh, of Ukraine it's kind of becoming now a routine and it will continue obviously until basically the uh, expected anticipated uh, uh, assault offensive if you wish or whatever the operations Russia will be conducted will begin in earnest and uh, as we all know the mobilization is basically uh, a partial mobilization is almost uh, over it should be done within a week now because Vladimir Putin was speaking about it uh, being done within two weeks uh, a week ago. So these 220,000 people are beginning already to pour into the front lines and in the rear areas of what will be their new military district, evidently, a combat military district, which will, is engaged now directly with war. And yeah, um, as you might have heard, uh, there were, uh, well, they call terrorist act. It is both terrorist and the versionary act of uh, basically killing 11 uh, Russian soldiers servicemen who were mobilized and 15 of them were also uh, heavily wounded and this has been done uh, it's already known today by two cities actually three two of them were killed and the third was uh, one was taken cast into custody they were uh, killed by the Tajik uh, 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 citizens which volunteered to fight on Russian side and they were accepted uh, in uh, uh, basically covered by the mobilization rules but yeah they are the ones who actually committed this uh, a crime and uh, they are indeed Tajik they're not just Tajik citizens they are Tajik as in ethnicity and religiously they are Muslims and most likely the followers of their uh, ISIS uh, uh, ideology and that immediately throws a little bit of the bridge or between the this act and you know British and American uh, uh, special services so to speak or Intel services who are directly involved in the and were directly involved in saving the leading uh, uh, the leaders of the ISIS in Syria and transporting them to Afghanistan so but that's now for the uh russia's uh, counterintelligence and uh, internal affairs uh, organs to uh deal with and mobilization generally is coming to a close and as i already stated the intensity so to speak of the uh, combat will only increase with especially all those offensive in, in Kherson, kupiansk uh, attempts on the amphibious landing and the um Zaporozhye nuclear power station being repelled actually time after time with horrendous losses for the Ukrainian armed forces and all those volunteers so to speak who are being obviously uh, con command commanded and controlled by NATO NATO people primarily British and Pentagon so but and that brings us to this very important uh, point which I wanted to uh, uh, basically discuss today and this is the fact that there are some very definite signs of the change of the rhetoric out there and you will recognize it once you begin to take in consideration the thing which actually Philippe Giraldi, a former uh, CIA officer, a very uh, famous uh, writer, and once at the, some point of time, one of the authors at the American Conservative, and former, uh, basically, CIA station chief in Turkey, I believe, who wrote it, I believe, 2009, but uh, I could be wrong, it could have been even earlier than that, 2007, 2008, and this was in the Huffington Post, can you believe that? At that time, a very popular media, which was trying to be a real uh, news organization, and that's what he wrote then, in one of the articles. 
near conservatives are characteristically better versed in reading and writing about battles than actually fighting them. Though that deficiency has not inhibited the in, in, initiation of vast schemes to remake half the world through force of arms. This is a succinct statement and this is also what uh, which actually uh, follows my uh, uh, point and me being on record for many years now that uh, we have the issue of the military competence actually in the top of the Pentagon and those military political top which makes those decisions on whatever, whatever the wars or, uh, you know, invasions, uh, bombing, what have you, because they are obviously uh, are only good to fight the small fry, small fish, you know, uh, and then suddenly when they begin to face with their, you know, uh, situation like they face today in Ukraine, and in the fact of having the best and largest uh, NATO force in decades, it's the largest de facto NATO force, which has been obliterated and basically a cannon fodder now. So they have issues. And evidently this thing begins to kind of trickle down a little bit, or rather trickle up, if you wish. And when you, and this is what I wanted to point uh, out to you. Not only there are some degree of confusion, and there are even the liberal interventionist, which is the euphemism for neocons, it doesn't matter how you view or call them the neocons, Trotskyites, zealots, you know, ideological zealots who are ready to fight and remake the world, you know, in the image of the United States, uh, you suddenly begin to get those strange signs and strange messages, so to speak, from all kinds of the media cabal which runs the war in Ukraine and supports it, and through the Biden administration, obviously, such as Washington Post or New York Times, which begin to say that, oh, you know what, yeah, there's something going on there, and yeah, Russians, of course, being defeated, they've been slaughtered, and they're about, you know, to collapse, but this also happens to the Ukrainian forces, wow. Seriously, they finally admit that actually the morale is very low, and we are talking about the, some serious operational and even tactical issues of the armed forces of Ukraine, and obviously the industrial scale obliteration of the any kind of weapons which are being sent to uh, 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 armed forces of Ukraine by NATO members and the United States, to the point of that Mr. Austin, the Secretary of the Defense two days ago I was forced to admit that, well, basically we are out of everything, you know. So, and they're beginning to uh, basically send to uh, Ukraine, for example, instead of 155 millimeter uh, uh, howitzers, triple servants, they don't have them anymore, nor do they have the uh, ammunition shells for them, and the United States is, isn't capable to produce them in uh, appropriate numbers required for the serious battles, uh, and they cannot produce them now to start with. So, the 105 millimeter howitzers, much less powerful, are being shipped to Ukraine. And even this is beginning to kind of, you know, dry up. And that's when, when you get these messages from all those, you know, liberal interventionists and Biden administration and neocons, you know, kind of tacitly trying to admit that things are not going as they planned. We get one of those neocons, neocons, Mrs. Applebaum. And Anne Applebaum, you should know who she is. She is one of the greatest falsifiers of the Russian history. She pretends to be a historian. She is not. She is just basically propagandist and ideologue. She is the wife of the uh, Mr. Radek Sikorsky, former foreign minister of Poland, the guy who is known to be absolutely off his hinges and Russophobe of, of Russophobes, basically. The guy is fanatical Russophobe. He hates Russian gods and some of his statements are just absolutely insane. And so that's kind of normal environment for neocons. That's where you get all those generals like Keen or Petraeus, or you get the, some guys like Ben Hodges, who evidently have issues understanding what modern war is and what uh, large-scale combined operations are. And they, of course, dream only about about one thing, to the, basically <clears throat> disassemble Russia, and if in the process they kill more Russians, you know, the, the better, you know, it is. So, but suddenly, an apple bomb, who is 
obviously a very notable figure in this Nyakon Cabal, including those Kagan clan and all those other people of uh, absolutely insane ideology, like John Bolton, for example. So suddenly she gets on the TV in uh, Germany, and they have this... Uh, they call it summit summit talk with Wolfgang Schmidt and and Applebaum. They call it progressive governance. You know, summit 2022 in Germany, and and Applebaum is there, and she kind of discusses things, of course, which she has no clue about because she is basically a, an academic fraud. And as all neocons, as Phil Geraldi already correctly stated, she's good only about reading and writing about battles, not about how to fight them because she doesn't have any background, proper background. And look what an apple bomb comes up with. This is an astonishing thing, uh, uh, considering the fact that uh, Applebaum is a really important figure, so to speak, in this uh, Nyakon Cabal, and one of the heralds, so to speak, mouthpieces of them. This is what an Applebaum stated. Just read and think about what she says. The West does not understand the consequences of Ukraine's victory in the conflict with Russia and therefore does not want such an outcome. U.S. British journalist, uh, journalist and Applebaum said at the PGS 22 summit in Germany. A video from the events was published by the YouTube channel of the analytical center Progressive Zentrum. I've been in Germany for a couple of days, and it's true that the issue of tanks continues to arise. And I asked myself why they are not being delivered, she began. According to Applebaum, the reason lies in disappointment due to the fact that the West does not know what a Ukrainian victory will look like. And this feeling is not unique to Germany. It is experienced in the US and other countries. The journalist wondered if the West wants the victory of Ukraine as is ready for such an outcome and its consequences. How will it change Europe? How will it change Russia? How will it change the balance of power? I believe the situation with tanks is connected precisely with that. It is a wowzer of the statement. It's both uh, absolutely incompetent, and I'll explain why it is, and why Phil Giraldi absolutely correct, stating that neocons have no clue about war, including the generals who actually are part of this cabal. But uh, the fact that uh, she thinks that uh, Europe doesn't, and NATO generally, and the United States doesn't want to provide tanks for Ukraine is because they are afraid that Ukraine might win. I mean, the sheer idiocy of this statement and sheer panic behind this statement is so obvious that I have to, however, explain to you why it is obvious. First, there will be no tanks uh, other than the for, uh, diminishing uh, basic resource of the former Soviet tanks from new NATO uh, countries such as Slovakia, for example, or Poland. Poland already gave up pretty much all of its uh, T-72s. All of them have been obliterated because, uh, again, tanks, uh, Western tanks, won't fare much better if actually my, uh, they probably will fare much worse in the real combat, in the real uh, combat environment where uh, uh, ATGMs such, such as Carnet or aviation dominate. So it doesn't really matter what you have there. If you have M1 Abrams, you know, Challenger or, you know, what have you, Leopard or Leclerc tanks, I mean, they will see the same fate. They will basically be obliterated with the same industrial speed and industrial quantity as it is happening with the other tanks, uh, Ukrainian tanks, which are now being, uh, I don't know exactly the number, you can look it up, I believe it is in something like two or three thousands of them has been wiped out of the order of battle from armed forces of Ukraine, including the other armed uh, uh, personnel carriers and armored vehicles. That, that basically brings the count even higher, you know, to higher numbers, something like 5,000. You can look it up. Don't quote me on that. Mr. Konashenkov gives the updates every day on this whole situation and the numbers. But the point is the fact that Applebaum begins to come up with this preposterous uh, reason that uh, 
NATO and the United States doesn't want the uh, Ukrainian victory because they don't know what's going to happen as one of the uh, 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 people on my discussion board on my blog uh, astutely and humorously noted he said yeah I didn't want to marry Christine Brinkley at, when she was very hot at that time because I didn't know what would be the consequences of me being married to the top-notch beautiful model it's absolutely the same reasoning so that and this shows however the panic which is settling in there and again as I stated the signs of this panic are tangible now from Mr. Austin, Secretary of Defense no less, uh, of Biden administration to other people speaking about the whole uh, situation with Ukraine as like, oh uh, yeah, it's not quite what we really expected. Of course they didn't expect that. But, and again, you can see yourself that uh, actually their tempo of operations increases with Russian troops and again, everybody expects something. Again, I don't know what does something be, but again, as I stated, I speculate, speculate, don't quote me on that, that eventually the force will be accumulated to, stry, uh, to start driving uh, 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 and, um, towards Nikolaev and Odessa and making this land bridge and then we'll see what's going to happen. So, But this is what is happening right now and yes, uh, uh, armed forces of Ukraine used pretty much all of their reserves, in, including those reserves which are trained in NATO countries to NATO standards. I don't know what's so special about that. NATO standards are just standards of the, which are pretty much common in the, uh, so to speak, you know, Russia or any other advanced army. So, but yeah, we know that there are some troops which will be sent back to France, for example, this wonderful independent country of France, which is not France anymore, long time ago, not France. But yeah, there are all those attempts to kind of train whatever they have now to throw as a cannon fodder as the, into the mid grind which Russia provides and again their uh, numbers uh, daily numbers are horrendous for armed forces of Ukraine and now we know that morale is collapsing and it's reported not only by uh, for example people uh, of Russian uh, troops or uh, people like Mr. Stremausov uh, who is the head of the military civilian administration in her own area but it's also reported even by the uh, Western media because yeah they thought, uh, fact is, even today, you can look it up again, it's in the news, in, in Lvov, Lviv, as they call it, the capital of the uh, Ukrainian banderism and neo-Nazism, there are demonstrations now and gatherings and protestations by the relatives of a number of brigades because they don't know the fate of their uh, loved ones, sons and husbands, because they hear nothing about them. And uh, basically Zelensky regime keeps them, you know, in, in total fog about the fate of those people who most likely all of them are dead. But they do not report those uh, uh, things because obviously they do not want to, Ukraine, Ukrainians, know the real state of their affairs. But then, you know what, they begin to kind of get messages here and there. Not that it's going to change them in, uh, in, in any way. They still think that, you know, they're winning and about to... Uh, in the way, you know, occupy and capture uh, Moscow, but this is how they think, and this is also what is happening when you have people who are neocons, who are really good merely at the tradition of bullshitting people, and who have no practical, uh, uh, basically, skills to conduct any kind of the warfare, even on the smaller scale, if you remember, for example, Afghanistan or Iraq, let alone on the scale of the front of more than uh, 1,000 kilometers, and engagement of the very serious forces and very advanced one. So, and yes, Pentagon and uh, people of Biden administration twisted uh, this uh, Musk, Elon Musk hands, and he's now back into supporting, as he says, the uh, communications with his Starlink satellites. But again, as I already stated, this also doesn't mean much anymore because Russians evidently are pretty good at um, uh, blocking or completely suppressing the signals which denies the uh, armed forces of Ukraine the most important part which is the tactical level communications networks so it's it's just going its own way and we might see more and more kind of steady change about this and that is why I needed to talk to you about this and also to demonstrate to you how insane those people are and uh, in that 
topic relative, uh, so to speak, tangential or even directly connected to the neocons because we have to understand a lot of neoconservatism is also uh, basically rooted in the Israeli first policies of the United States foreign, uh, foreign uh, 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 affairs establishment, but also to Israel. And uh, as Mr. Medvedev on the record today, he stated that uh, if Tel Aviv sends arms to Kiev, the movie would send bilateral relations into a tailspin. And he was reacting to the words of uh, Israeli Minister of Diaspora Affairs, Nachman Shai, who stated that, yeah, Israel need to do, you know, same thing as other countries and support Ukraine with weapons. And here's the, another issue, which is, of course, makes it uh, so funny because Israel cannot support much... Uh, uh, and cannot supply much to Ukraine except for some maybe uh, subsystems, tactical communications, maybe some radar, some electronics, because um, honestly, <clears throat> Israel is not a big player, despite the fact that neocons spent decades uh, basically talking uh, Israel and its military capability up. The truth is, is not that great of a power. And of course, the first, the appearance of the first uh, Israeli weapons officially. Uh, on the front lines of the armed forces of Ukraine might change uh, Russian kind of hands of approach to uh, forays of the Israeli upper, uh, uh, aviation. They still try to do it once in a while into the Syrian airspace. And who knows, you know. So if Israel wants to play this dangerous game, of course they can do that, but I don't think so. There are many, uh, you know, uh, how to say it, uh, <clears throat> smart and uh, realist people in Israel who probably think that this idea by this minister is not a very good one. But we'll see. Anyhow, Russia has a lot of, uh, so to speak, pain dials in case of Israel, and she can certainly dial up there to 11 if need be. And <clears throat> in the related news, uh, when you look at what is going on with the whole uh, bizarre thinking and bizarre environment of the neocons and liberal interventionists, which are euphemia, it's the same thing, basically. You have these guys, if you read the Washington Post today, and you go even over the uh, headlines, you see yourself that uh, another absolute absurd self-contradictory things, the same as an Applebaum's baloney and reasons she gives uh, why uh, the United States and Europe are not ready to see Ukraine win as if it was possible to start with. But look at this. Technology funded by U.S. taxpayer bolster China's hypersonic missile program. And China is using specialized American technology to advance this hypersonic missile programs a Washington Post investigation has found. And one has to ask the question, if China uses uh, American specialized um, uh, program and technologies to advance this hypersonic pro program, one has to inevitably ask uh, not only warranted but irresistible question then where is this technology if it's american and tax uh, you know taxpayers funded technology working for the u.s developing uh, hypersonic weapons well that's the question isn't it a good question to ponder because the united states not really anywhere close to develop even fairly not conventional i would say but some type of the arab ballistic hypersonic missile akin to uh, a russian kinjal or uh, even some glider they talk a lot about it but as i already stated it's uh, years and years in uh, uh, so to speak making and it will take another years i don't know how many three five maybe ten to come uh, uh, up with something which is remotely comparable to what for example russia has or china has in terms of its hog gliders and missiles but what can i say you know what i mean it's it, it is what it is i cannot i don't have even anything else added to this uh to demonstrate to you a complete incompetence and complete, uh, I mean, absurdity which is happening right now in the, what I would call nothing less than media chaos, which exacerbates already economic and political chaos in the United States, not to speak of Europe, which is going to implode and European Union is going to disintegrate fairly soon. 
So when you look at this, it's like, people, how about a little bit of the common sense, at least, you know? But don't expect it from the neocons. They begin to feel that they lost this too, which that's what they do. They lose anything related to warfare, real serious war. And you can see, sense this from coming from an, an Applebaum, from Washington Post, New York Times, Austin, and Biden's administration in general. And... Uh, Russians today are uh, just kind of making, putting the cherry on the top, so to speak, stated very clearly, Mr. Miller, who is the man of, uh, who runs Gazprom, this monster of uh, energy, st told today that, you know, the CEO of Gazprom has said that a price cap on Russian natural gas would lead to a termination of supplies as it would violate existing contracts. So, and uh, Europe, under the uh, pressure from the United States, uh, obviously still continues to come up with all different kinds of their uh, ideas on how to basically disintegrate and kill itself economically. And they want now the price cap on Russian gas. Sure, you know, Russians already have written Europe off, basically. And if they want to do that, so blend them. Russia will simply stop the all kinds of supplies. And there are many takers in the East for Russian gas and Russian um, oil and other types of energy, other types of resources and other types of the technology and other machinery, by the way, which Russia produces in huge numbers, by the way. So, and that's what you see. It is complete madhouse and the absurdity begins to reach the grotesque I mean, scale and that is why I wanted you to I want to tell you today about for example an apple bomb as one of the very concentrated so to speak exhibits a of a complete confusion and panic mode actually within the cabal neocon cabal which runs Washington DC and this is just the start warm up as I already stated and again a lot depends on the midterms and yes we can state confidently now that most of Russian military activities was also timed as one of the major operational strategic factors to America's uh, midterms and uh, we are in for a very interesting ride so buckle up guys and this is what I wanted to tell you today and as you can see yourself you see this is the uh, my chair has been lubricated finally by actual lubricant and I don't have squeaking anymore. So let's close the WD-40 problem for now, an issue I do not want to talk about it. And as always, guys, those who like what I do, please uh, subscribe to my channel. And those who can afford, uh, please support me on my uh, Patreon. So this is it for today, guys. And this is your primer for Monday. And have nice rest of the week. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.